It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship, our 10th anniversary this year. It's Mission King of the Baggers, round four of nine for 2024. We're at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin for Moto America Superbikes at Road America. Everyone, welcome to the broadcast and the booth. I'm Greg White, standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, Mission King of the Baggers, a rain race yesterday, and it was a pretty crazy race. Yeah, it was crazy, and Greg, all the, all the practices and things were done in the dry, but it was Troy Herfoss. We haven't seen anybody come into this series with the credentials that this guy has had, Greg, and he's showing he's going to be awful hard to beat in the dry and in this torrential rain conditions that we saw yesterday. James Rispoli, big crash going down into turn one with his teammate directly behind him. James is okay, spoke with him last night at length. He's up and ready to go today. But it was this guy, Greg. He wins by some five and a half seconds, and it really wasn't that close. Yeah, he kind of cruised home the last half of the lap. It probably was going to be more like a 10 or 12 second victory. But looking at the stats for Troy Herfoss versus Kyle Wyman this year, you can see the margin of victory was really close until we got to Road Atlanta race two, and then this last race we had in the rain, and that's the big situation. But Kyle Wyman in Winter Circle yesterday said, it's going to be dry, and I've got something for him. So Troy Herfoss and Kyle Wyman, they're definitely getting after it. But Jay, let's take a look at Road America. This four-mile roller coaster is one of the best in the country. No question, Greg. You said it is the best in the country, in my opinion. Long run down to turn one, then down into that turn three area where it leads onto that back straightaway. Perfect conditions today. So you're going to see a lot of drafting as they get down to that braking zone into turn five. Then they're going to go through all the forces and things over to the carousel. A lot of fans spread out over that infield down towards Canada corner, turn 12 there, Greg. A lot of action happens then. And then up to turn 14 and that run up the front straightaway, you better have your strategy ready to go of what you decide to do on the last lap, whether you're leading or in front. And let's get a more intimate look at this track as we head off to break. It's our Insta 360 track lap, and it's Troy Herfoss in the dry. I'm going to tell you something. If you can get on this racetrack, if you come to a Moto America race, you can pay to ride this thing in the middle of the day. You want to get that done. We are so close to a race start. Don't go anywhere as we have B-Twin action coming at you. to the race that's going to unfold. Roger, this Mission King of the Baggers riders, they put on a show each and every time. Who are you looking at? I'm looking at Kyle and Troy Herfoss, the two guys leading the points, fighting for this title, the, the two heavyweights in this class, uh, to see what they can do. They've kind of had a step on the field all weekend, and we've talked a lot about the Indian and Harley robbery and, and Harley being only an hour away. It's going to be interesting to see. I know Kyle's going to throw everything at it, so I'm interested and uh, looking forward to watching those two guys battle it out and see if anybody's able to go with them. Yeah, we talked to Kyle after the rain race yesterday, and he knew he didn't have the speed to fight for the, w the win, and so he just stayed smart, didn't want to do any damage, and just collected a second-place place. But he said, we're going to have something for them in the dry. It's certainly going to be exciting to watch, so we're going to send it back over to Greg and Jason for the call. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V twin motorcycles. What a crowd we have here today at Road America. It's been spectacular. And now, Mission King of the Baggers. Yeah, look up top there, JP. So it's Kyle Wyman, Troy Herfoss, and Tyler O'Hara on the front row. Yeah, then we got Gillum, Raspoli, and Flinders on row two. Then we have Rocco Landers, Corey West, Jake Lewis, Travis Wyman, and Bobby Fong straight off the of Superbike, Greg, right into this race. Kind of, kind of get the feeling, I don't know, you tell me, I kind of get the feeling this is an important race for Kyle Wyman and that factory Harley team. I think that, uh, they need to kind of stop a little bit of this momentum that Troy Herfoss is on. Troy's just riding amazing. He was quickest this morning again in warm-up. Um, so, yeah, dry race here again. It's going to be a lot different than yesterday. Could probably expect to get two, three, four of these bikes, five of these bikes maybe up in, the, in this lead draft. Yeah, it kind of feels like that. I mean, the championship point spread is 14 at this point. Yeah. It's an 18 race series for this category, but it feels like every point matters. Five laps, and we're away racing just like that. 
Seemed like a quick light there, and it was to see who was ready for it the most. The two guys that are battling in first and second in the points are going to go into turn one, first and second. It's going to be Kyle Wyman, then Herfoss, Hayden Gillum, our defending champion. You heard him say he's on Old Faithful, Greg, so I'm wondering if that is last year's bike that he is on. You can see uh, Tyler O'Hara, James Raspoli. Looks like he's trying to Look get Look at he goes right to the lead, goes wow, the number one. Wow. He just outbraked everybody, just shoved it up the inside, and all of a sudden, just like that, the Revzilla Boat Tool, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson, the number one plate leads the way. But is how about that factory horsepower right now? Kyle Wyman goes right around him. Is he going to try it again down into here is the question. As you see, Wyman does a good job of blocking it, but look at Gillum. Oh. Just rides around the outside, and then Raspoli gets a big draft, get, drafts himself up to third. So Gillum right now has obviously got a bike that he feels like handles pretty well, Greg, because he's just kind of throwing that big 600-pound Harley Vance and Hines Harley around. Look, I talked to Terry Vance about this situation. He said, look, you can look at, this, at the timing sheets and see that we're down on horsepower, and we continue to develop our motorcycle, and so do the other teams. So it's like you show up, and it's like, man, what are we going to do? Hayden Gillum knows that from watching the other races, of motorcycles that are a little bit down on horsepower, what you need to do to try to win a race at a long racetrack like this with tons of straightaways, and he's trying to get it done right now. The problem for the number one is he's not really making the break that he needs to hold off the faster bikes on the straightaway. You gotta get up front and stay up front, don't you? That's basically the point that Greg was trying to make by some of the other slower bikes and some of the other classes. We've seen riders try not to get shuffled back too far. And that's what Gillum is trying to do right now. Not get shuffled back too far, as you're going to see Wyman goes by him down the right side. Let's see if Gillum just goes into the Canada corner and lets off that brake lever, and he does. He just rolls back around the outside of the 33. The big problem is coming when they come out of this right in the next left. They're going to go through here, Greg, and then they're going to get on this front straight. But look at the speed that Gillum's got. He's pulling the field apart at the front. Kyle Wyman just wants to get by him down this front straightaway, get a nice draft, and then try to get far enough away to where he won't be susceptible to Gillum doing the same thing down in turn three. You can see the front two riders have got just a small gap now over the rest of the field. Trial run, and it looks like it's going to be Wyman who comes across the strike, leading the lap. Hayden Gillum from a start with the fastest lap of the race, though, Hannah. And like you mentioned, he is on Old Faithful. I spoke to him about it. They reverted back to the old engine they were using that Rocco's been using all along. He said it's just much more reliable than the upgraded engine package. They don't have enough time on it just yet. Yesterday was also his first ever DNF in the class, so he was not looking to repeat that today. But he's already off to a much, much better start. Yeah, and he's just throwing the bike all over the place, too. Yeah. I mean, he must have so much confidence if he's got that mindset. Yeah, now you got this battle for third between Herfoss and James Raspoli as they head down into turn five. Let's see how that pans itself out as Raspoli doesn't look like he wants to give up the position, but we'll have to to Herfoss. Saw Bobby Fong roll just past our commentating spot and pulled his bike to the side. So early race for Bobby Fong. Kyle Wyman now is going to feel a little bit of confidence in knowing that Hayden didn't quite, wasn't close enough to get by him down into three or five, but Herfoss sees what's happening here in front of him, and he wants to make sure to go after Kyle Wyman himself now. Kyle Wyman trying to pull the pin. Tyler O'Hara with the fastest top speed in a draft so far of this race, 164 miles per hour. Our speed trap is just past start finish line on the front straightaway, but Hayden Gillum. Close enough again now, like down to the chicane. He's gonna, he's for Ooh. sure gonna take a shot. Let's see if he does. He's gonna take a shot at Kyle Wyman, and he does. You can see that on the left side of the screen. That was Bobby Fong retiring, but Hayden Gillum was able to slide back up under Wyman. And what that's going to do is it's going to help Herfoss as well. Herfoss is loving seeing this at the front. And he's going to be looking for a double draft from both of these guys when they get onto that front straightaway. This time, Wyman makes the pass. Let's see if Gillum goes back to the inside. He does. <laughs> oh, yeah. Boy, there's nothing this field can do. I mean, who do you have your money on? Betting is now available for Moto America fans. Go to nxtbets.com slash playma. For more information, go to Moto America. Dot com. The, Aiden Gillum is throwing the kitchen sink. I mean the, the Kohler the kitchen sink at this thing. Yeah, and look at that. You just saw you just saw what happened there. Herfoss goes up underneath Kyle Wyman in that last corner, and now he's gonna get the draft. And what Kyle does not want to see is that Indian go past that Harley Davidson in front of him. But uh, Hayden did such a good job. He had a bit of a gap. Let's see if he's able to hold him off as they go down into turn one. They uh, he is. 
and Kyle was able to draft, draft back past Herpes. All the while, Raspoli sitting there, Tyler O'Hare sitting there. All the main players are there. I saw Rocco Landers run wide, Greg, the lap prior in turn one as Herpes slices right back underneath Wyman going down into turn three. Hannah. For Troy, for Herfoss, he hasn't been here in seven or eight years. He's on a KTM 990 Super Duke, so he doesn't remember much at all. He's basically starting from scratch. He said he's enjoying the track, but it's unclear how things will shake out in the dry. These are the first competitive laps he's seen up against those Harley Davidsons, and he knows his Indian has some different strengths. His crew chief, however, is abroad, so he's in Australia, and he has been sleeping on American time a bit nocturnal in order to debrief with Troy between these rounds, hoping to get back here by Lucina Seca. Well, that must be a little stressful for sure for this team, but obviously they've got this bike dialed in and Herfoss continues to get more and more comfortable with this machine. 220.296 so far the fastest lap of the race for the SNS Indian motorcycle rider Troy Herfoss. But definitely Kyle Wyman, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, had said in Winter Circle yesterday, they've got some speed for these Indian motorcycles in the Harley Davidson. And Kyle's showing right now that he's got something in. The question now is, is Herfoss just goes a little bit off racetrack there. Yeah, and Hayden Gillum's going to try. I mean, Herfoss did a good job there. He felt Gillum up along the outside of him, so he made that bike even wider in between that chicane. That's why his exit hurt just a little bit there. He didn't want to be stuffed in that right hand or by the number one and create a bigger gap to the 33. So wise, wise move from Herfoss there. Now Raspoli looks like he wants to look down the inside of Gillum. He's not close enough. Nope, not quite, but he'll be in the next spot as far as trying to get through on Gillum, because he's not going to want to let these two guys in front of him get away either. Now, and if Gillum gets passed again, you got a tip of the cap to the number one plate. Obviously down on performance with that motor, but he is putting in the ride of the day. Onto the front straightaway they go. Rispoli behind him in fourth. But now we see the battle of factory V-twin iron. It's 33 and 17. Man. It's Harley Davidson and Indian. And Horfoss is in the draft. Is he going to have enough to pull out and take the lead? He goes to the inside, and there goes the 17. Is he going to keep it tidy? Kyle's trying to turn it up the inside, and oh, it looks like our number one goes wide. Maybe he got pushed a little yeah, wide. Yeah, looked like they were. Those guys were all getting that in Kyle Wyman back in the Harley, and it almost, almost getting into the back of Horfoss. So. For Kyle now, what he's got to do, I feel, Greg, is just kind of settle it down. He sees the 17 in front of him. He's got to try his best to go with him through the infield. I think he's going to see that that Harley is pretty damn fast down these straightaways, Greg. We've been able to see him, uh, Herfoss specifically, not really be able to do much with Kyle down the straights. So Kyle's just got to take a little bit of a deep breath as Herfoss looks back. And that usually happens because you didn't get redrafted down a straightaway. So you kind of wonder what happened to the guy behind you. He had a little peek over his shoulder. And right now, it's going to give Kyle a little bit of confidence. Troy's really trying to up the pace through this infield section at the moment. And Wyman had a look over his shoulder, so he can see that he's clear from attacks for the moment. And that's going to help set his strategy on what he's going to do with a lap and a half to go. And now it's in Raspoli's hands in terms of that podium finish. It would be a good bounce back for Raspoli, who's had an up and down season if he's able to put this thing on the podium. But of course, Harley Davidson here at their home track and their home race. All they want is a victory over Indian motorcycles. And when we go in less than two weeks time to Brainerd, Minnesota, that's gonna be the home track for Indian motorcycles. Pretty wild, when we go through the carousel the next lap, if we see Kyle Wyman and Troy Herfoss that close, I know one of the things they've worked on on the Harley is to create a little bit more lean angle in that bike, ground clearance wise. And you can see the difference in the lean angle between the Indian and the Harley through there. Herfoss goes through that whole carousel, Greg, and barely touches his knee on the ground, where the Harley looks like it just turns. But where the Indians made the big performance advantages this year are on the way into the corners. Not as much movement, much more stability there on that motorcycle than they've had. And that's why you see him being able to run off into these corners as fast as he is. Now, Wyman's going to get a good look here to see if he can get in the draft of the 17. We're coming by, Greg. White flag this lap. So this is it's all, all settled out here on this particular lap and O'Hara looked like he got by Hayden Gillum going down that front straightaway as well as Raspoli in third. Herfoss goes 19-8 that lap. Wow. wow. Raspoli was sideways on the exit of one and the two guys behind him continue to battle it out. Of course that was turn one where Raspoli had his big incident in the rain yesterday.
putting that behind him for sure. But that battle for the final podium spot continues to rage on as Herfoss is able to continue to manage this two or three or four bike length lead. But Kyle Wyman, if he's going to use the speed of that Harley Davidson, has a couple more opportunities ahead of him. But you can see, Jason, the stability you're talking about yeah. on that SNS Indian motorcycle into the corner as Kyle's got to send it a little bit sideways, and Herfoss's bike looks directly and straight in line. Now, the hardest thing here for Troy, and I'm sure he's learned from this, being the veteran that he is, and, uh, but you know, the last time we were at a track, Greg, where there was a lot of drafting and things, was Daytona. Troy outsmarted himself just a little bit much in the chicanes. I don't think that you're going to see that same thing. He's confident with what he's got underneath him. Now he's four races or three races in with this factory Indian team. He's going to have a little bit more confidence in the motorcycle. Kyle Wyman drawing up to the back of him here, and her boss will hear that bike back there. He's had a couple looks over his shoulder. And uh, for Kyle, what Kyle's got to do now is not make any big mistakes. He's got to be able to get down into Canada corner, don't, don't try to get too close. Just get close enough to where you're going to be able to sniff that draft coming up that front straightaway. Here we go. This no electronic riding aids for these riders. You can see Herfoss spinning the wheel on the drive. Kyle Wyman deep in the draft. This is a huge opportunity if Kyle can get up the inside of him. He's there. You can see he's past him, but can he get it slowed down? And can he get it turned? So Wyman takes over the lead, but he's a little wide. Herfoss trying to turn it up the inside. They nearly go side by side. So for the moment, the nod is going to go to Kyle Wyman. I think Kyle feels like he's got the bike to hold Herfoss off. There goes Herfoss. There you go. Up the inside, he's going to park him. Kyle's going to try to do the dirt trap thing and square him up. Here they go, Herfoss with a great move. Does Kyle Wyman have enough real estate to be able to draft and pass? They're coming up the top of the hill. He's going to pull out of the draft. They go side by side. And to the line, it's Kyle Wyman who takes the win by 39 hundredths of a second. Well played, Kyle Wyman. Tyler O'Hara gets by James Rispoli for the final spot on the podium. So it's gonna be Harley Davidson who takes victory in their home track. Race number two of Mission King of the Baggers. Wow. Photo finish, JP, here's how it looks. Yeah, and you can see it there. And you can see how that was playing out. Kyle felt like he had the bike to lead coming up that front straightaway. And you could tell that maybe Troy didn't think he had enough legs to, to lead him across. So he made that dive bomb move in the last corner. Kyle, just like you said, Greg, squared up that last turn. Got that big Harley off that corner, and you can see the fans out here. There's some Kyle Wyman fans here with the 33 flags waving in the infield. What a big win for Harley Davidson in front of their home fans, in front of the corporate office just an hour down the road in Milwaukee. Big win. Can't wait to talk to Kyle Wyman about how that strategy played out. It's burnout time for the Harley Davidson. Hold on to it, Kyle. We got to talk to you in Winter Circle on the other side. We're back here with coverage from Road America, but this is a look at a watch party that's happening at Cowboy Harley Davidson down in Austin, Texas, as they're getting ready for the Circuit of the America rounds of the Moto America Championship and had all of their employees and customers and friends and uh, all out to watch the racing today. I'm sure they certainly enjoyed what they just saw happen with that finish for Kyle Wyman being able to get around. They also handed out three sets of three-day VIP tickets uh, to some of their customers through different drawings. So if you're having a watch party anywhere around the country, make sure you send us some clips or some photos from it uh, at Moto America on all of the social channels. Make sure and pull those and try and get him into the show. You see Kyle Wyman was able to collect one of those 33 flags from his cheering section out there around the racetrack, Roger. Yeah, and, and for Kyle, you know, it's a big big race for him, not only just because Harley's here, but as a competitor as well. Uh, you know, his uh, Troy's been winning the challenge one race one. You know, you need, really need to get that momentum slowed down and get it back in your corner, and, and Kyle's able to to do that. And, uh, you know, we he talked on Friday. He really loves the the, stre the pressure. He get, comes there as the best, and the pressure was on today. And uh, he was able to rise to the challenge, and uh, put on a really good show for us. That was a great race to watch, but a great ride by Kyle. As yeah, his quote was, "Bring the pressure, bring all the pressure." He said, "These are amazing opportunities to have," and he's certainly able to take advantage of it today. Just a great result for him. And being able to get back to the top step of the podium, Troy Herfoss will be up there alongside him, as well as Tyler O'Hara as everyone makes their way around 
to get to celebrate and do the interviews over there. So we're going to go ahead and send it back over to Greg, Jason, and Hannah. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. By Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley Davidson and custom V twin motorcycles. So Kyle Wyman goes to the fans and celebrates. And look, there's a Kyle Wyman Harley Davidson 33 flag. He grabs that and goes back to his bike. Now, Jay, look, all I'm going to say is. If you look at the front of the bike, they're sponsored by Rockford Fosgate, right? They make the, the stock head units for Harley Davidson. Couldn't they put one on this bike? Maybe Think. ride around, a cranking, stereo action going. cranking, we are yeah. the champions or something like that, you know? I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know if that would be legal in tech. I'm not sure if stereos are allowed on a race bike. But Kyle Wyman certainly enjoyed this moment in front of the home crowd. Let's take a look at those results and how they played out. And we mentioned to you the margin of victory, 0 .039 seconds over Herfoss as Kyle Wyman. Tyler O'Hara, obviously, with a tenth of a second over Raspoli to the line. And Hayden Gillum, Jason, what can you say? Wow. That dude rode you know, so his... Hard. So hard to, to, to finish fifth. That's, that's, it kind of make that's the kind of the weekend he's had this weekend, poor Hayden Gillum. Yeah, but still, what a run he had in fifth place. And hopefully, he's got a smile. As Kyle nearly wads the bike again. <laughs> Park Ferme. <laughs> Park Ferme. Yeah. But now he gets to celebrate with his team. Kyle. Was a little bit off there, I'm sorry. And Troy Herfoss, what a run he had as well. And a little bit off there, he said to his crew, I'm sorry. I mean, that's, I mean, what do you do? I mean, he attacked so hard. He's such a class act, this guy, too. Just getting to that final corner, he put himself in, I think, the position he could. Let's get down to Hannah. Kyle Wyman just getting his helmet off. Fourth victory of the season. Trading victories with Troy Herfoss. Trading passes all race long with Troy Herfoss. Take us through that battle and how you pulled it off at the line. Uh, sheer power of will, I guess. Man, that was uh, that was such a fun race, such a good battle. All the anticipation, you know, it didn't let us down. And man, that was a that was just such a good race. And uh, my Harley Davidson Road Glide, man, that thing was hauling ass today. And huge thanks to my Harley Davidson factory team for all the hard work they put in. And man, <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot to take in. So you know, it's uh, it's really special to get this done for Harley Davidson at the home round with the home crowd and uh man i don't know what to say i'm a little bit speechless i want to give a, a big shout out to the davidson family willie g out here today i also want to give a shout out to uh 6d helmet because uh we lost one of our co-founders recently and uh it's been a big loss for 6d and the whole family so thanks everybody and uh yeah let's keep this thing going Congratulations to Kyle Wyman moving on over second place today. Just by a hair was Troy Herfoss. Troy, you got a big smile on your face. How much fun was that race battle? Uh, he's so happy he's making me smile. I'm actually angry. Um, hey, Kyle was so good. Um, congratulations to him first and foremost. Uh, I'm just, I'm loving it. I, I want to win, but I'm having so much fun out here. Um, I can put this bike wherever I want it. Uh, the Indian Challenge is a great bike, and I just uh, I just lacked a little bit in a few areas. So I would have liked a bit more track time. I'll, I'll put it that. That'll, that'll be my only excuse I put out there. But um, thanks to everyone for coming out. Uh, Indian Motorcycles, Progressive SNS Cycle. It's a home race. Um, you guys put in a huge effort. I really appreciate it. Mission Foods, uh, Drag Specialties, Parts Unlimited, Suomi. My sticker blew off yesterday, so this is for you guys. Um, and it's my first time here with my family, so I'm just going to enjoy this. Troy Herfoss headed off to celebrate with his dad, his wife, and his beautiful two little girls. Rounding out our podium, podium his teammate, Tyler O'Hara. Back-to-back podiums on the weekend for you. I know you've been working really hard, said you've been doing your homework. What was it that gave you the upper hand for this podium battle today? Yeah, my team, SNS Cycles, they just work relentlessly. They flip this bike over, and they don't stop. They never give up on me, and I ride my butt off for these guys. And Indian Motorcycle Factory, all the engineers, everybody behind the scenes that just put so much work into this. I'm, I feel like the luckiest guy alive to be out here racing these motorcycles for Indian Motorcycle. Uh, my support system back home, everybody that believes in me, um, 
it's coming. I, I believe it's it's coming. And congrats to Harley on the win. Kyle riding great. All our sponsors, 6D, our partners, Progressive, Parts Unlimited, Drag Specialties. All you fans for coming out. It's so good to see you guys lined up all the way around the track. We appreciate you. We love you. Um, yeah, awesome. Mission Foods, everybody that supports our program. Uh, hell of a race. Rispoli, Gillum, I mean, we were back and forth, rubbins, racing, and it was super clean. And uh, We're coming. It's, it's, it's momentum. We're getting a rhythm, we're finding our flow, and we're having fun, and we're enjoying it. So, Thank big, you. big smile, step in the right direction for Tyler O'Hare, guys. Yeah, and that's true. It takes a lot of fun, it takes a lot of momentum, and we still have a lot of races left in this season. Our coverage continues. Mission King of the Baggers at Road America in a month. It's so much fun watching Mission King of the Baggers and, and their interviews because there's so much respect between all of the riders. And I mean, even for Troy Herfoss saying that the excitement that Kyle Wyman was displaying was just making him laugh, even though he was angry. And just like, it was just amazing the 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 race, how tight it is, and how aggressive they are. But they never touch. It's pretty incredible to watch. So this is another um, element of the new timing and scoring that you can get on the scoring tab on Motor America LivePlus.com. And take a look at this graphic. You heard Troy Herfoss say to his crew that I'm sorry I was just off a little bit. He even said it there in the interview to Hannah. This is a comparing their two best laps. So the yellow part of the racetrack, at, uh, which is sector all of sector three. Um, is Kyle Wyman. That's where he's better around the racetrack. The blue, that's where Troy Herfoss was dominant. And then the gray section in the middle, Sector 2, they were about the same. Yeah, and you could kind of see it throughout the races too, as well. You know, the carousel, Troy Herfoss really struggled through there, that really long right-hander. Uh, if you struggle through there, you can uh, really lose a lot of time because it is such a long right-hander. And You know, for them, they'll see it. When they come back next year, they'll probably try to make some improvements in that area. You see all of the riders up there now with their trophies in hand. So their duties are nearly done. They'll be collected on a golf cart by Moto America, taken over uh, to do a post-race press conference. And with that, we're going to send it back next door to Greg and Jason. Post-race celebrations as Kyle Wyman enjoys the top step of the podium. And that trophy he gets for this. And boy, what can you say about Troy Herfoss? So far this season, there's been eight Mission King of the Baggers races. And for Herfoss, it's been four wins and four second place finishes. He doesn't even know what third place feels like yet. And that gives him this championship lead of nine points over Kyle Wyman. And really, it just keeps coming back to the second race at Road Atlanta in the rain for Kyle, but still nine points there. Tyler O'Hara is 69, so he's got a gap over James Rispoli with your number one plate, still trying to find his rhythm as we get to some tight and twisty tracks later on in the season. But uh, of course, Brainerd International Raceway is coming up in less than two weeks time. That's gonna be the home race for Indian motorcycles. And that's where Tyler O'Hara and Troy Herfoss are really going to try to get it done. For Hannah and Jason, I'm Greg. Thanks so much for checking us out. We'll see you from Brainerd.